Now, the Three Martini Lunch with Greg Corumbus and Jim Garrity. And welcome, everyone, to the Monday edition of the Three Martini Lunch, along with Jim Garrity of National Review. I'm Greg Corumbus of Radio America. Happy Halloween. And Jim, when we wrapped up our recording on Friday, we probably didn't think we were heading into the quietest of political weekends. But man, I'll tell you one thing. Twice in our end of the year awards, I have given the fading into oblivion award to Anthony Weiner. Ne- <laughs> never again. Never again. He never goes away. Anthony Weiner will, um, will, will haunt us for the rest of our days. <laughs> not today. But uh, Greg, but someday, if I have not told it, I'll tell the story of meeting Anthony Weiner at, on Bill Maher's show. Um, it's it's a it's a sad, depressing, and and painfully ironic story, post scandal. Uh, but uh, but for another day, because we have enough craziness as is. There are actually too many crazy martinis for one day. This is the crazy seven course meal martini lunch. That's right. They are all crazy today. If I didn't already mention that, so let's dig right into it. Of course, what happened shortly after we finished recording and posting on Friday is that uh, Jim Comey, the director of the FBI, sent a letter to relevant uh, committee chairman on Capitol Hill and the ranking members saying, hey, uh, we've come across some new emails that are potentially pertinent to the Hillary Clinton investigation. We just thought you would want to know about that, uh, and we'll keep you up to date. We're not sure exactly what that will mean, but we thought it was important to let you guys know. So that got out to the media, and so the immediate pushback against Jim Comey by the left, which loved Jim Comey back in July when he said there would be no reasonable prosecutor to bring charges against Hillary Clinton, they don't think that about him anymore. Uh, The Clinton campaign put out a video featuring... Uh, Campaign spokesman Brian Fallon, uh, and here's a little bit of the uh, spin that he put on it. FBI Director James Comey released to Congress an unbelievably vague letter that was light on facts and heavy on endo, and it only serves to give Republicans a new line of attack against Hillary Clinton. But the more information that has come out, the more overblown this all seems, and the more concern it has created about Director Comey's actions. Let's walk through what we know. Republicans said at the beginning of this that the FBI case that was closed in July had been reopened, but that's been debunked. And law enforcement sources say that the emails in question were never withheld by Hillary Clinton or the Clinton campaign. Reports say that the emails were not to or from Hillary Clinton or even ever on her server. In fact, it's entirely possible that they are all duplicates of emails the FBI already looked at months ago. So if that's the case, why send this letter in the first place? Wow, that was a good straw man there, Jim. Uh, this could potentially just be duplicates. And if that's the case, why would he do this? Robbie Mook, same thing. Director Comey sent a letter saying, we have some information. I don't know if it's significant. I don't know if it isn't. He but, didn't say where it came Robbie, from. He didn't say what it was about. He didn't even say whether these emails were sent or received by Hillary Clinton. And furthermore, uh, another hypothetical that's out there is that these are duplicates that have already been released. Yeah, it's out there because of you. Uh, Tim Kaine saying this, <laughs> saying the same thing on ABC News this week. Uh, before the Anthony Weiner revelation came up on Friday, uh, here's Ohio Congressman Tim Ryan. Uh, he, of course, uh, most famous in this campaign for planning to team up with Hillary Clinton to kill the coal industry. But uh, here's what he thinks is responsible for all this. But I will say this. Where have these documents, where did they come from? How did the FBI get to them? How? Where are they? We have all this stuff going on with Russia right now. All of the WikiLeaks issues. Now it's all Russia's fault. Uh, back yeah. in July, when uh, Comey decided not to recommend prosecution, the Washington Post editorial uh, shortly thereafter was very harsh against Republicans. Quote, if Republicans believe the FBI director is corrupt and political, they should have the gumption to say so. Instead, many have insulted James B. Comey with slimy implications and underhanded threats. Since Tuesday, when he announced he would not recommend charges against Hillary Clinton relating to her use of a private email server while Secretary of State, um, they have not uh, put forth a similar one responding to the Democratic reaction to this. Diane Feinstein back in July, Comey did the proper thing. Now she's saying uh, one thing is clear. Director Comey's announcement played right into the political campaign of Donald Trump, who was already using the letter for political purposes. Elijah Cummings back in July told Comey on during a hearing that he hopes his family's watching on TV so they could be so proud of him. Uh, now he says it's obvious that Republicans would immediately uh, misconstrue and mischaracterize the letter. And, of course, you've got the New York Daily News, not a fan of Donald Trump. FBI Director James Comey's democracy-bending decision to inform America 11 days before its presidential election that the Bureau is digging into a trove of additional emails demands the highest condemnation. And he must resign. President Obama must order Attorney General Loretta Lynch to take the case out of Comey's hands and to fully report the facts as they are known. 
Without any base of knowledge, Comey let loose combustible information that could improperly and groundlessly decide the election between Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump. Comey has betrayed both the country and the Federal Bureau of Investigation. Jim, ton of hypocrisy, obviously, on both sides in reaction to the story compared to what we saw in July. Uh, but to watch uh, the Democrats uh, flip and flop around on the deck like a dying fish is uh, amazing here. What an appropriate metaphor there, uh, Greg. Now, a couple of things jump out about that. First of all, I love the Clinton camp saying, saying, look, you know, Comey issued his statement, but his statement was vague. Instead, take this information from anonymous law enforcement sources telling you that it's no big deal. <laughs> now, I assume those law enforcement sources exist. I assume they're being quoted accurately. And yeah, I'm sure there are some people in the law enforcement community, which encompasses like tens of thousands, hundreds. The cop on the street is technically uh, a law enforcement source. But let's assume it's somebody in the FBI. Let's assume this person in the FBI actually knows what's going on at the high level of the FBI, which is, you know, a much smaller group. They could be diehard Hillary partisans who think Hillary is terrific. And there's, or they could be, you know, crazy people. I mean, there's, we don't know. We, there, we can't come to the conclusion, oh, an anonymous source says this is no big deal. Thus, we in the electorate should treat it as no big deal. Um, also, as so you're going through that, Greg, one thing, that, the phrase that really jumped out at me from that New York Daily News editorial, did I, they really are writing, quote, democracy bending decision to inform America. <laughs> so informing the American public is bending democracy? Like, to quote, you know, one of our old inspirations, Rush Limbaugh, Greg, Words have meanings. You can't just make up new meanings to them. You can't just throw them all together in random order and hope that they form a, uh, a persuasive argument. Bending democracy would be something like voter fraud, okay? Um, informing America, telling the public what's going on is not bending democracy. Secondly, like the entire Democratic Party is throwing a child's tantrum that the FBI director had the audacity to keep his word that he made under oath to Congress to keep them appraised of the uh, any new developments in the investigation. Three weeks ago, apparently, they found these, this trove of emails. It went through the Clinton server. Now, Greg, you and I are not going to oversell this. Maybe there's nothing in it. Maybe it's all the standard uh, emails you'd expect between Huma and Hillary, and, or maybe not even to Hillary, you know, all the kind of standard you know, emails you'd expect. Or maybe there's classified information in them. Comey said he couldn't tell, he couldn't make that determination until they look at them. For some reason, it took the FBI three weeks to even start moving on a subpoena for this, uh, or a warrant, I'm sorry, to, to look into uh, these emails. I have a strong suspicion that that, that emitted an odor to Comey, that, you know, three weeks and nothing's been done on this. This looks like it's slow walking or it's some sort of conclusion for this. Now, I don't get it's not crazy and frothing at the mouth to say I agreed with Comey's decision in the summer and I disagree with his decision now. You can say that. But the problem was the Democrats said that not only is Comey the most honest, nonpartisan, this man sweats pure integrity, <laughs> um, that he was the, great, the greatest law enforcement guy, the wisdom of Solomon, the greatest guy at the FBI since Elliot Ness. He's like Serpico and Jesus rolled into one. <clears throat> but then the moment he makes a bad decision, oh, the guy's crazy. He's Torquemada. He's, he's Ahab. He's, he's you know, we can't trust his judgment. He's got to resign. Get that guy out of there. I mean, this is the sort of thing that happened in 84. Where, you know, or, or, I don't mean 84 as in the year. I mean, in the novel, where like, we've always been at war with Oceania. Apparently, James Comey has always been an enemy of, the, of all that is good and righteous and truth and justice and all that stuff. Never mind the fact that everybody was singing his praises in midsummer if you were a Democrat. I pointed this out to Donna Brazile, DNC chair last night, that she had retweeted out the Washington Post editorial saying, to attack James Comey for his decision is to attack the rule of law itself. So I tweeted out, I said, hey, so Donna, we're clear on this, right? You know, you attack Comey, you're attacking the rule of law. That's still in place, right? She blocked me. <laughs> that really irked me because all I'm doing is quoting her. All I'm doing is pointing out what she said back this summer. And now she seems to think, well, if I, if I block Jim... He'll never, you know, no one will ever know. <laughs> the tweet's still there, right? And even if she wants to delete the tweet, I screen captured it, uh, Donna. I put it up on Twitter. You can't hide from this. And this is the Stalinist impulse of this, these, these morons of the Democratic Party. They nominated this woman. They knew she was under investigation. The Clintons have like decades of scandals behind them. You cannot claim to be surprised by any of this.
And now they just want to, you know, let's erase it. Pretend they won't notice it. And you can't just do a complete 180 on James Comey the first time he does something that, you, that he makes a decision you don't like. Wait, could you tell him fired up about this, Greg? <laughs> oh, man. The Democrats have uh, put on a very special show over the past three days. But as always, Jim, there's one Democrat that stands out. This is still the first crazy martini. This is from the office of the uh, supposedly honorable Harry Reid, Democrat, Nevada. Dear Director Comey, your actions in recent months have demonstrated a disturbing double standard for the treatment of sensitive information with what appears to be a clear intent to aid one political party over another. I am writing to inform you that my office has determined that these actions may violate the Hatch Act, which bars FBI officials from using their official authority to influence an election. Through your partisan yeah, actions, me. you may have broken the law. The double standard established by your actions is clear. And here comes the Harry Reid uh, just making stuff up, potentially, like he did with Mitt Romney and his taxes. In my communications with you and other top officials in the national security community, it has become clear that you possess explosive information about close ties and coordination between Donald Trump, his top advisors, and the Russian government, a foreign interest openly hostile to the United States, which Trump praises at every opportunity. The public has a right to know this information. I wrote to you months ago calling for this information to be released to the public. There is no danger to American interests from releasing it. And yet, you continue to resist calls to inform the public of this critical information. By contrast, as soon as you came into possession of the slightest innuendo, they use that word a lot, related to Secretary Clinton, you rushed to publicize it in the most negative light possible. Uh, so, Jim, I don't know if he's just throwing garbage against the wall like he normally does, or he actually had this conversation, but leave it to Harry Reid to take it to the next absurd level. You know, Greg, I think there's really only one phrase that actually describes our reaction to all this. Way to go, Nevada. Way to go. I'll give you one more reaction. Because remember the last time the Democrats brought up the Hatch Act, it was that open letter to Iran from Tom Cotton? That's right. That's right. Yeah. So the Hatch Act is supposed to be like, if, you have a, if you're a government official, right, if you work for the Department of Energy and you start putting up a hooray for Clinton sign in your cubicle or in your office or hooray for Trump or something like that, that you're not supposed to be doing partisan electioneering in your job in which you're, you're on the taxpayer's dime. You're not supposed to be doing polit political stuff. Uh, there are certain rules about whether so whether you can run for partisan office, like if you want to run for your town council or, or board, local board of education or something like that. It doesn't mean if you're in the FBI, you're not allowed to in investigate anybody who's running for office. <laughs> That's kind of what Harry Reid wants it to be. That basically, if you're in the FBI, you can't do anything that might hurt our side. Because if that's the case, hey, uh, Greg, wouldn't the investigation of Trump and Russian connections, wouldn't that violate the Hatch Act, too? You would think so. But apparently we don't like consistency. But Tom Cotton has responded and uh, not mincing any words on Twitter. Quote, Harry Reid is a disgrace to American politics among worst men ever in Senate. He can't go soon enough. And many Democrats privately agree. All right. On to the second crazy martini. And, Jim, this is kind of the reaction you get anytime somebody's uh, under investigation. This is from Politico. Longtime Hillary Clinton aide Huma Abedin has told colleagues that she was taken aback when she learned that the FBI found her emails on a laptop belonging to her estranged husband, Anthony Weiner, and doesn't know how the messages got there. A source familiar with Abedin's account told Politico on Sunday. Word that Abedin claims to be unaware of the cache of messages came as a U.S. official revealed that the FBI obtained a warrant to examine the emails in greater detail. So... Uh, she just has no idea how 650,000 emails ended up on this computer, Jim. If I'm Hillary Clinton, I'm not buying that. <laughs> Wait, let me get this straight, Huma. You have no idea what's in your own emails on a computer you shared with your husband. No, by the way, whose brilliant decision was it to share an e a computer <laughs> with a guy known for sending texts of his, his yin-yang and his uh, underwear and stuff like that? By the way, if, if you're Huma Abedin, do you even want to share a computer with Anthony Weiner? <laughs> no. I'm not going to add any further comment. Just just let that sit there for a moment. Let's just take that in. Um, I, I have a very hard like, – like, at some point, these people's excuses just stop making sense. Because, you know, you know it's real. Oh, I may have missed that email. It may have gone to spam. I may have looked at it and forgotten it or accidentally deleted that, I have no idea what's in 650,000 emails on my, my shared laptop. Yeah, I'm not buying that at all. I don't. <laughs> I, don't I think what makes more sense is um, I don't know. I don't remember if there's any classified information in those 650,000 emails. You know, if we were talking about four, <laughs> we'd have a better chance of not having classified information. When there's 650,000, then, you know, 
By the way, um, you know what I think they really needed to deal with those 650,000 emails, Greg? What? Sanebox. <laughs> Free advertisement, Sanebox. Good for there you. There you go. A little bonus for you, Sanebox. Let's not forget that. So. <laughs> Oh yeah, very. The black hole. Any email from Anthony Weiner can automatically go there, and you'll never get an email from Anthony Weiner again. <laughs> Look at all the great things we do for our sponsors there, Greg. So anyway, Absolutely. Keep that in mind. Yeah, yeah. Good for you, Sandbox. You could be a big help there. But I do want to revisit the issue you mentioned at the beginning, and uh, and I did so delicately. Obviously, we know what Anthony Weiner does with at least some of his uh, internet access devices. A lot of time, those sleazy sites are infected with viruses and other things. And so through all that, is it possible that people who had no business looking at some of these emails might have had the chance to do so? Oh, yeah. Here's the thing. What I'm finding baffling, <clears throat> a little bit earlier talking about the, uh, the danger of Russian hackers and things like that. Yes, that's exactly why we didn't want Hillary Clinton using a private server in the first place. Right? I mean, you can't use, be careful, there are hackers out there as a defense for Hillary Clinton when that's specifically what people were worried she was risking classified information to. So... There we go. Amazing. All right. On to the uh, third crazy martini now. And uh, Doug Schoen, uh, if you watch Fox News with any regularity, he's on there a lot. He's on there with Pat Cadell. They're kind of the wringing the hands Democrats that uh, they're still Democrats, but they, they pretty much don't like Barack Obama. And they're not a big fan of a lot of uh, different Democratic policies. Schoen, however, has uh, to this point uh, been loyal to Hillary Clinton. But given the events of the last three days, Speaking with Harris Faulkner on the Fox News Channel, now, he says, at least at the moment, he's off the Hillary bandwagon. Given that this investigation is going to go on for many months after the election. No matter who wins. No matter who wins. But if the Secretary of State wins, we will have a president under criminal investigation with whom Ad Aberdeen under investigation, the Secretary of State, the president-elect, should she win under investigation, Harris under these circumstances, I am actively reassessing my support. I'm not a Trump. Whoa, whoa, so, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. Right. You're not going to vote for Hillary Clinton? Harris, I'm deeply concerned that we will have a constitutional crisis if she's elected. Wow. I want to learn more this week, see what we see. But as of today, I am not a supporter of the Secretary of State for the nation's highest office. How long have you known the Clintons, Doug? I've known the Clintons since 94. Jim, as you said in our uh, organizing email this morning, now Doug Schoen realizes Hillary is a potential criminal? Yeah, and I don't want to hit him too hard for, for coming to a conclusion that I, think is, uh, that I think is right and wise and perhaps obvious for decades. Um, <laughs> I'm just kind of struck by two. And I think by the, I, I salute you, Greg, for your description of him as the – he and Cadell as the ringing hands Democrats <laughs> uh, on Fox News Channel because, yeah – they're Democrats, right? They, you know, both, you know, Cadell worked for Jimmy Carter and, and Schoen worked for Clinton's early in the, uh, particularly early in the Clinton presidency, Bill Clinton presidency. They go on there and they're, they're not afraid to hit their own side. They're not afraid to be critical of Hillary Clinton. It's kind of qualified support. They really want to see, uh, I think, more of the old style, maybe FDR style um, or maybe Harry Truman style, conser uh, uh, maybe almost conservative Democrat or at least a, a more moderate Democrat than the party has shown in recent years. Um, so I guess good for you, Doug Schoen. Um, now, here's the thing. I think as you and I have said, it's possible none of these emails are really that scandalous. I mean, it's possible there's no classified information in them. And the only thing that is is they are ordinary emails that happen to go through the Clinton server. Should they have been turned over with the rest of them? Yeah, probably. But, you know, but on the scale of Clinton scandals, it's possible this is not a very big deal. On the other hand, if there's any classified information on Anthony Weiner's laptop, um, I think everybody in the country is going to say, OK, if Anthony Weiner can get their hands on this, then the information clearly has already reached evildoers. Uh, <laughs> it has clearly already gotten in the hands of people we don't want getting their – we don't want those hands going anywhere, to be honest. But anyway, um, so the, the, a sign that there was absolutely no protection of classified information by Hillary Clinton and her staff. And it's popping up in, in you know, other people's laptops. And it's just not you – know, this, is, this is a reason to keep her out of the, the Oval Office. Last so that takes Doug terrific. But uh, – <laughs> Really? <laughs> Only now? This is it? I suppose that when the straw breaks the camel's back, it's not the weight of that particular straw. It's the accumulated weight of all the straws. Indeed. Indeed. We'll get to one nice thing in just a moment. But exit question on this. If Hillary is still able to win, how fierce will be the Justice Department prosecution of Anthony Weiner? Oh, well, I mean, you know, <laughs> presuming he doesn't Vince Foster himself. Um, oh, gee. 
I mean, Doug Schoen, by the way, he's going to get gang audited. I mean, just, you know, <laughs> there, there's going to be, it's going to look like the closing scene of The Godfather. You're just going to see vindictiveness from the Clintons uh, left and right. But I guess here's the other thing is that I guess that's the other observation about Schoen is that, like, if you've been with them for this long, hang on for another 11 days, right? And then you're a loyal supporter, and then you're a made man, you're a capo in the Clinton Mafia, and they take care of you and all that stuff. But, uh, um, no, it really is bizarre. And yes, I would assume Anthony Weiner. look, we, we don't know what the FBI is going to find on this, but I, I think, again, um, the fact that Anthony Weiner not only was, you know, if, if you couldn't talk Uma Abedin out of marrying Anthony Weiner, <laughs> I, I have to really wonder about your persuasion skills at all. Uh, remember, this was the marriage, I'm not making this up, that Bill Clinton presided was the presiding officer. That, I yeah, saw he, that. You know, at some point, you know, if you put this in a Chris Buckley novel, people would say, okay, that's a little off. All right. Take it back a little bit. Too bizarre to be, to be made up. All right, on to actually fun things. Uh, today is Halloween. Uh, Jim, I I'm guessing that uh, your boys will be scavenging authenticity woods with great fervor tonight. What will, uh, what will your neighbors be finding at their door? Uh, that is a good question. Whatever variety pack we got, I was tempted to give them classified documents from Hillary's server. <laughs> um, so here you go. You know, because, you know, authenticity woods uh, in a normal year is probably 50-50. Um, we're, we're in Fairfax County. Uh, it's the type of, you know, this type of place that we're, the right Republican, uh, Bob McDonald pre-indictment type could, could win. Um, Alexandria and, and Yuppie Acres, where I used to live, was where the, the Obama yard signs came pre-installed. So that was one where it would, didn't do me any good to proselytize to my neighbors. And this one, um, this let mom and dad know who they're voting for. That's right. Yes, I know they're government workers and they're Democrats, but just let them know they're endorsing the corruption there. And, uh, <laughs> see how and okay. what? I get egged on Devil's Night, so I think that's a sign that uh, you know that every everyone's feeling a little uh, a little more tolerant of each other's political differences out of the sheer horror of all the uh, all the nominees this year. And what will the boys be going as this year? Uh, ninjas. Nice. I was trying to get them to you know, dress up as the type of Chinese who were funding the 1996 <laughs> campaign, uh, yeah. but they preferred to be ninjas. So to me, that's this is the, the evening wear of those uh, Chinese donors. <laughs> uh, you still have plenty of time to make them more cynical, Jim. Uh, our, our neighbors will be graced by the presence of Snow White and Minnie Mouse tonight. So. Oh, that's nice. Okay. They'll be sweet and adorable. And that'll get lots of candy that, you know, Daddy will have to search every one of them to make sure there's no... <laughs> There's none of those. By the way, as I understand it, Greg, there were never any razor blades in any candy ever. But uh, that, that urban legend nonetheless canceled Halloween for a bunch of kids back in the 80s and uh, gave every parent an excuse to go through all of them and, and requisition certain ones that look like they might not be safe. <laughs> yeah, I always like to uh, take that prerogative. I'm wondering if my four-year-old, who last year was three, will do what she did last year by sifting through the candy bowl, looking specifically for M&Ms, and then asking neighbors if they have them if they're not in the bowl. So... <laughs> Do you have any M&Ms in the house? Can I, can I speak to the M&M provider in the house? <laughs> She's not shy. I got to give her that. Jim, have a great night with the kids. Talk to you tomorrow. See you tomorrow, Greg. Jim Garrity of National Review. I'm Greg Corumbus of Radio America. Thanks for being with us and tune in again on Tuesday for the next Three Martini Lunch.